How can I become more like Christ? Ephesians 4, 22 through to 24, King James Version. That ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. You and I should desire to be like Jesus Christ. He is our example, not a man, not a pastor. We have been seeing so many leaders in the Christian faith falter and found in sin. And the unfortunate thing is that for some people, for some people it has made them question their standing with God and Christianity. I am here today to encourage you not to exalt man not to exalt a pastor or a public speaker. Look up to Jesus. He is the one that you should look up to. And the Bible tells us this. Hebrews 12, 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Looking up to Jesus, not men or women, I can tell you now, this recent period of time, this won't be the end of Christian leaders being caught in sin or living double lives. It started long ago, and it will happen again. I am here to simply encourage you to build your faith on the solid rock that is Jesus, not on the shifting sands of religion, not on the shifting sands of men, not on the shifting sands of your emotions. Don't build your faith on a pastor. Build it on Jesus Christ, the Jesus Christ of this Bible. He is the one you should look up to. He is the one we should aspire to be like. So the question is, how can I become more like Christ? The first thing an individual needs to do is to become born again. The second is reading the Word of God. If we know the Word of God very well and we have studied it, we will see that Jesus is the Word of God. Many still don't understand how Jesus was the Word and how the Word became flesh. The words of God became flesh, and that is Jesus. All the words of God, the commands, the wisdom of God became flesh, and John told us that in the beginning was the Word, and nothing was created without the Word. When God said, let there be light, He used the Word. When he said, let there be animals and other creatures, he used the word. Without that word that he spoke, nothing would be created, and that word became flesh. The Bible is full of the life of Jesus. The Bible gives wisdom that you cannot get from anywhere. As you begin to read the Bible, you notice that this book was not written by men. Because the Bible exposes you to the lives of others and their mistakes and how you can avoid that. The Bible has everything you need to instruct you to live a holy life. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. If you want to be like Jesus, read the Word of God. Pick up the Bible and start reading. That is the first step to build a Christ-like character. I don't know why many people see the Bible as an ordinary book when it is food to the Spirit. Without the Word of God, you cannot grow spiritually. The Bible was written by the inspiration of God. God ordered that all His words are properly documented and made available for everyone. Do you have the Word of God in you? Can you boldly say you have the Word of God in your life? You may be reading the Bible every day and still not have the Word of God in you. You may be reading the Bible for reading's sake. When you read the Bible, you need the intervention of the Holy Spirit because He is the teacher. He is the one that will tell you what is written in it. Are you reading the Bible like a storybook? Are you allowing it to go into your heart and digest it? Matthew 4.4 4 says, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. It would be wrong if you base all your life on physical food and not spiritual food. 
It would be a mistake for you if you chase all the finest things of life and you lack the Word of God to grow. It would be a mistake if you don't have the Word in you. You cannot live by bread alone, but by the Word of God. But once you have acquired knowledge of the Word, you then need now to begin to act it out. You need to be a doer of the Word. There are plenty of people who have knowledge of the Word of God but they do not put the knowledge into action in their lives. This is why you can see people who can stand up on pulpits and preach the Word of God, but live a life that contradicts the very Word of God they are preaching. My friend, no saint is absolutely perfect, but we as children of God are instructed in Hebrews 12, 14. Pursue peace with all and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. We can chase after holiness. We can go after it. We won't be able to attain perfect holiness, but each day we move closer and closer to perfect holiness. And the only way you can do that is to be a doer of the Word. James 1.22 But be ye doers of the Word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. There are different ways that God communicates with his own people. We must know these ways in order for us to walk and live in the will of God. Whilst we live in this ever-changing world, it is imperative that we follow God and that we allow him to guide us. God has made it possible for us to hear him and to allow him to guide us. In this sermon, we will go through different ways God guides us. And the last two ways may surprise you. The number one way you can hear from God every time and how God can guide you every single time is through the word of God. 2 Timothy 3 verse 16 to 17 states, All scripture, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God, that the woman of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Over 2000 years ago, Jesus came to this world to die for our sins and our transgressions and he gave us a new life under the new covenant. None of us had the chance to meet him, nor listen to his teachings at the time. But thank God for the Bible. With the Bible, we have the opportunity to learn directly from God. With the scriptures presently available for us, we now have access to God's undiluted message to all of us. Over the years, and even until now, even until this very day, the scriptures have been a significant guide for Christians in this world, showing us what God wants us to do and how God wants us to live our lives and how to serve him, and ultimately guiding us through this world. It contains the instructions for everything that we may go through in this life. The Holy Spirit, and the word of God are our principal guides in this world. The word of God is perfect for every situation. Deep within the pages of this book is eternal life. The Bible is God's textbook. We are not to pick up the Bible and just look at it as if it's an average textbook. This book has everything you need to get you from this life and into eternity. This is God's roadmap to direct us into heaven. This world is not our home. Heaven is our home. And as you begin to read this Bible, you see a clear theme that is telling you go this way and you make it safely home. Oh heaven. Every time I think of heaven, my mind goes to John 14. Let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. 
And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Do you understand that, my friend? Jesus has gone home to heaven to prepare a place for you. Now you need to do your part. You need to search the scriptures because in the scriptures you will find Jesus. The answer to your problems is not in a man. The answer to your problems is not in a woman. The answer to your problems is not in a doctor. The answer to your problems is not in a psychologist. Everything you need is in the word of God. Are you struggling with sin? Are you broken hearted? Are you lost and forgotten? The answer to your problems is in the word of God. In them you will find Jesus Christ. From Genesis 1 right through to the book of Revelations, you will find him and he will guide you to eternal life. The answer to your problems is in the word of God. If you're tired of making silly decisions, if you're tired of making decisions that you regret, you can find wisdom in the book of Proverbs. If you're tired of doubt and unbelief, you can find faith in the book of Hebrews. If you're seeking life, you can find it in the Gospels of Matthew, Luke, Mark and John. If you're seeking the Holy Spirit, you can find it in the book of Acts. The Bible has everything you need. I encourage you to read the Word of God, search the scriptures, and in the scriptures you will find Jesus Christ. The Bible encourages us to read the Word of God. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 Study and show yourself approved unto God. The last thing I want us to do to be like Jesus is to transform our hearts. Run from everything that is of this world. Don't allow yourself to be of this world. Romans 12, 1 and 2 I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Do you want to be more like Jesus? If your answer is yes, which I believe it is, then you have to let go of the worldly desires. All the worldly pleasures that you have been feasting on, you have to tell them it is time to go. They cannot continue to be with you if you want to take the shape of Christ. They cannot be controlling you. You need to let go of them. You need to say goodbye to them. Renewing your mind. We cannot continue to be like those who are in the world. The first people who were called Christians were not acting like those in the world. Their behaviors were different. These people healed the sick. They cast out devils. They stood for Christ and they stood for the sound doctrine. These are the qualities the people saw and called the Christians. Can people call you a Christian? Can people look at you and say you are a Christian? If we were to go to your workplace today, would the people you work with call you a Christian? 